Let's talk for a moment about electric solenoid valves. Now the valve is the component in the irrigation system that opens up, that allows water to enter into the zone pipes, which then pushes water through the sprinkler heads. So we have to control this valve with an electrical component in the system that our timer can turn on and off, and that is the solenoid. The solenoid is the electromechanical component of the valve that opens up that gives us our actuation of this valve. And so what happens inside of this solenoid, there's a little metal plunger that has a coil of wire around it, and when electricity is applied to the solenoid, it works as an electromagnet and it retracts the plunger and allows water to move through the series of diaphragms and openings inside the valve. We'll talk about that later in our valve course, but for now, all you need to know is the solenoid is the electromechanical portion of this valve that causes it to operate. Now, it generally takes around 17 volts to get your average solenoid to actuate. As far as the current requirements and the amount of electricity that it takes to operate this solenoid, there's two different requirements. We have an inrush requirement, which basically means that for any um, electrical appliance or tool, it takes a little bit more electricity when you very first turn something on, and that's called the inrush requirement. And for the typical solenoid, that's around 360 milliamps. And then the operating or the holding current is around 190 milliamps. So as you can see, it takes a good bit more to open this solenoid up as it does to hold it open across the period of time that this zone is going to be running. Now when we measure the resistance on a solenoid, and it can be measured here at the solenoid or from the timer, since we have a continuous circuit from the timer out here to the solenoid, and typically what you're going to read on a good solenoid is between 25 ohms and 55 ohms. And when we get down and talk about each individual valve, I'm going to give you the individual ohms that you should be reading for each manufacturer. Like I said, they're a little bit different, so you'll need to have these on hand as you go out and do troubleshooting on some valves. It's also interesting to note that these requirements are calculated, if I'm not mistaken, around 70 PSI in the irrigation system's main line, but the higher the pressure goes, the higher the requirements are to open this solenoid up and to hold it open. 